was a medical counselor of India. Now it is question hour. And also... Question number 31. Question 31. Question 31. Question 31. Thank you. Sabhapati ji, a vivrant Sabhapatil par rakh diya hai. Thank you, sir. Yesterday, the union cabinet led by Sri Narendra Modi has approved the establishment of the new developmental bank under the BRIC. I would like to know from the Honorable Minister which will be the base currency for the BRIC bank operations and whether the currencies of the BRIC countries could be swapped and if so, what are the positive and negative implications of cross-currency swapping on our continuous dependence on the US-dominated World Bank and IMF, particularly the existing loans which we have got from both the IMF and the World Bank. बिल्कुल सही कहा हमारे सांसद साथी मैत्रेन जी ने कि कल ही कैबिनेट ने न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक ब्रिक्स का और जो उसका कंटिन्यूएंसी रिजर्व अरेंजमेंट है उसकी ट्रीटी दोनों को हम लोगों ने कल रेटिफाई किया है कैबिनेट से जहां तक उन्होंने करेंसी के बारे में पूछा है करेंसी बेस करेंसी तो डॉलर ही होगी लेकिन ये एक बैंक ऐसा है जो लोकल करेंसी को भी प्रोत्साहित करता है तो जो कॉलेबल अमाउंट इसमें है वो अगर किसी ऐसे देश में हो रहा है जहाँ की करेंसी अलग है और उस करेंसी में वो पैसा चाहते तो उसमें भी दिया जा सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे भारत इसका एक सदस्य है और कोई प्रोजेक्ट भारत में लगता है और भारत उस प्रोजेक्ट के लिए पैसा मांगता है तो रुपए में भी वो पैसा दिया जा सकता है थैंक यू सेकेंड इन द लाइट ऑफ चाइना डोमिनेंट पोजिशन एंड द प्रसेंट स्ट्रक्चरल डिस्पैरिटी बिटवीन चाइना एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द ब्रिक कंट्रीज is it possible for the other member countries to control and balance China in operations and funding priorities and deciding on the ongoing trade disputes like the Bali Trade Agreement? Will this, along with a host of other intra brick disputes, could limit the effectiveness of NDB bar CRA and also threaten the unity among the developing countries? Pati ji, this bank mein kisi tarah ka domination China ka is liye nahi hai ki Bharat ka ye prastav tha ki equal share holding honi chahiye. पहले चाइना जीडीपी आधारित शेयर होल्डिंग चाहता था अगर जीडीपी आधारित शेयर होल्डिंग मान ली जाती तो निश्चित तौर पे उनका डोमिनेशन होता उनका वर्चस्व होता लेकिन चूंकि भारत ने यह प्रस्ताव दिया कि पांचों के पांचों देश की इक्वल शेयर होल्डिंग होगी तो आज इक्वल शेयर होल्डिंग भी है और इक्वल वोटिंग राइट्स भी है इसलिए किसी का डोमिनेशन यहाँ नहीं है ये शायद पहला बैंक है जहाँ इक्वल शेयर होल्डिंग है और इक्वल वोटिंग राइट है थैंक यू श्री राजीव शुक्ला सौरती जी जैसा कि आप जानते हैं कि जो ब्रिक्स की स्थापना में भारत का बहुत अहम रोल है और ब्रिक्स बैंक की स्थापना में भारत का बहुत जो है पूरा पूरा भारत का प्रस्ताव और भारत की तरफ से इसमें सबसे ज्यादा पहल की गई मैं माननीय मंत्री जी से जानना चाहता हूं कि ब्रिक्स बैंक में भारत का अहम रोल सुनिश्चित करने के लिए क्या कदम उठा रही है और क्या पहला हेड ब्रिक्स बैंक का भारत से होगा भारतीय होगा जी बिल्कुल सही कहा कि भारत का बहुत अहम रोल है क्योंकि ये प्रस्ताव ही भारत ने दिया था जब ब्रिक्स समिट यहाँ पर हुई थी और जो आपने कहा कि हमने वो सुनिश्चित कर लिया है कि पहली प्रेसिडेंसी भारत को ही मिल रही है पहला प्रेसिडेंट भारत होगा और उसके बाद रोटेशनल प्रेसिडेंसी है भारत के बाद ब्राजील ब्राजील के बाद रशिया रशिया के बाद साउथ अफ्रीका फिर चाइना तो इंडिया ब्राजील रशिया साउथ अफ्रीका और चाइना ये रोटेशन है और पहले पांच वर्ष के लिए भारत प्रेजिडेंट होगा Shri Tikar Rangarajan. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, is it not true that BRICS has created a very strong bipolar world, which enhances the bargaining capacity of the third world? And our government has taken a right decision, whether we will continue and whether we will uh, make the BRICS is one of the strong pillars of the world. देखिए मैं इतना जरूर सांसद महोदय को कहना चाहूंगी कि ब्रिक्स किसी के खिलाफ नहीं है ब्रिक्स अपने आप में एक बहुत स्ट्रांग ग्रुपिंग है इंडिया ब्राजील रशिया साउथ अफ्रीका और चाइना की लेकिन अगर हम ये समझे कि बाइपोलर कर दिया और किसी के खिलाफ या वेस्ट के खिलाफ ये कोई ग्रुपिंग है वो ऐसा नहीं है लेकिन अपने आप में एक बहुत स्ट्रांग ग्रुपिंग है भारत की बहुत अहम भूमिका इसको बनाने में रही है और भारत इसके साथ रहेगा I don't feel that it is against anybody, but it has created a strong bipolar world. When we say bipolar, that means that no one is against the other. That's why I said bipolar is not. It is a strong grouping of people. India is the main leader and India will remain with it. 
श्री विश्वराज पाटिल ये ब्रिज के इस नए बैंक के कारण जो भारत पांच साल तक नेतृत्व तो करेगा इसमें कुल कितने देश आते हैं जिसको थर्ड वर्ल्ड कंट्रीज बोलते हैं जो प्र, आगे प्रोग्रेस होने वाले देश उनकी आर्थिक व्यवस्था सुधारने के लिए इसके द्वारा कोई ठोस कदम इसके द्वारा उठाए जाएंगे या लाभ होगा उन छोटे देशों को जी बिल्कुल मैं सांसद महोदय को बताना चाहूंगी आपके माध्यम से कि अभी इसमें पांच देश हैं जो ब्रिक्स के अपने कंट्रीज हैं जिसमें भारत ब्राजील रशिया साउथ अफ्रीका और चाइना और वो पांचों फाउंडर मेंबर्स कहलाते हैं लेकिन इसकी मेंबरशिप सभी यूनाइटेड नेशंस के मेंबर कंट्रीज के लिए खोली जाएगी फाउंडर मेंबर्स ये पांच हैं लेकिन सारे के सारे देश जो यूनाइटेड मेंबर के नेशंस के सदस्य हैं उन सबके लिए ये खोली जाएगी और एप्लीकेशन के साथ उनका एडमिशन होगा और जहाँ तक उनकी सेवा करने का सवाल है या पैसा देने का सवाल है लोन के जरिए गारंटी के जरिए इक्विटी पार्टिसिपेशन के जरिए उन छोटे देशों को भी लाभ पहुंचाएगा ये बैंक क्वेश्चन थर्टी टू टू एक विवरण सभा पटल पर रख दिया है सभापति महोदय भारत सरकार और अमेरिकी सरकार के जनवरी पंद्रह के समझौते के अनुसार सप्लाई करने वाली विदेशी कंपनियों को परमाणु दुर्घटना में प्रभावित लोगों को मुआवजा नहीं देना है सरकार और बीमा कंपनियां अधिकतम 1500 करोड़ रुपए का मुआवजा देंगी मैं मंत्री जी से पूछना चाहता हूं कि हमारा पैसा विदेशी सप्लायर्स की गलती से होने वाले परमाणु दुर्घटना में प्रभावित होने पर हमें ही मुआवजे के रूप में सरकार द्वारा दिए जाने का प्रावधान कहाँ तक उचित है और सरकार विदेशी सप्लायर्स का दायित्व कैसे सुनिश्चित करेगी ताकि वो खराब सप्लाई न कर सके सभापति जी सबसे पहले तो मैं एक गलत फहमी दूर कर दूं। ये समझौता विदेशी कंपनियों के लिए नहीं हुआ है इस समझौते में केवल एक स्पष्टता की गई है और वो स्पष्टता शायद भारतीय कंपनियों को ज्यादा चाहिए थी तो ये जो हमारे मन में एक भाव आ गया है कि ये विदेशी कंपनियों के लिए किया गया है ये अरेंजमेंट ये एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अरेंजमेंट है और कई तो कहते हैं कि विदेशी भी नहीं अमेरिकी कंपनियों के लिए किया गया है ये धारणा मन में से निकाल दें क्योंकि जो संयंत्र हमारे अपने यहां लग रहे हैं स्वदेशी संयंत्र जिनमें भारतीय सप्लायर हैं वो विदेशियों से ज्यादा मांग कर रहे थे कि आप स्पष्ट करो कि हमारी लाइबिलिटी क्या है जैसे हरियाणा में ही फतेहाबाद के गोरखपुर गांव में 2800 मेगावाट के प्लांट्स लगने हैं 700 का तो अभी डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह उद्घाटन करके आए 700 मेगावाट का अब वो पूर्ण रूप में स्वदेशी संयंत्र है सप्लायर स्वदेशी है लेकिन वो भी ये चाहते थे कि हमारी लाइबिलिटी क्या हमारी देयता क्या बनती है इसको तो स्पष्ट कर दो तो सबसे पहले अगर हम ये बात निकाल दें दिमाग से कि ये विदेशी कंपनियों के लिए किया गया है या अमेरिकी कंपनियों के लिए किया गया है तो हमारे आधे प्रश्न तो वैसे ही समाप्त हो जाएंगे रही बात 1500 करोड़ की तो केवल 1500 करोड़ नहीं है मुआवजा 1500 करोड़ तात्कालिक मुआवजा इंश्योरेंस पुल के माध्यम से है वरना एक्ट में जो प्रावधान है वो प्रावधान तीन मिलियन एस का है जिसका आज का अगर हम करेंसी कन्वर्ट करें तो 2600 करोड़ बनता है इसके अलावा हमारा ये लॉ जो सी एन एन डी लॉ है हमारा ये कंपेटिबल है सी एस सी से जो एक कन्वेंशन है सप्लीमेंट्री कॉम्पनसेशन के लिए और ये जो सी एस सी है इसको हम साइन कर चुके हैं इसको हमें रेटिफाई करना है वहां से भी लगभग 1000 करोड़ ये बनता है और इसके अलावा मैं आपको बता दू कि एक्ट में ही एक प्रावधान है धारा छ की उपधारा एक जिसमें केंद्र सरकार ने स्वयं ने कहा है मैं पढ़ के सुना देती हूँ आपको क्योंकि ये बहुत ज्यादा मिथ्या धारणा है कि केवल 1500 करोड़ में हम अपने विक्टिम्स को छोड़ रहे हैं द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ ईच न्यूक्लियर इंसिडेंट शेल बी द रूपी इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ 300 मिलियन स्पेशल ड्रॉइंग राइट्स और सच हायर अमाउंट एज द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट मे स्पेसिफाई बाई नोटिफिकेशन तो हम पंद्रह करोड़ पे अपने विक्टिम्स को नहीं छोड़ रहे आज के दिन भी 300 मिलियन एस का मतलब 2600 करोड़ रुपया लगभग 1000 करोड़ रुपया सी का और उसके अलावा 
न्यूक्लियर इंसिडेंट भगवान ना करे कि कोई हादसा हो लेकिन अगर हादसा होता है तो उसके व्याप को देखते हुए उससे होने वाले नुकसान को देखते हुए सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्वयं एक अधिसूचना जारी करके जितना चाहे उतना हायर अमाउंट नोटिफाई कर सकती है सेकेंड क्वेश्चन सरकार द्वारा पंद्रह करोड़ रुपये की अधिकतम मुआवजा राशि परमाणु दुर्घटना में प्रभावित लोगों के लिए रखी है परमाणु दुर्घटना होगी तो उसमें लाखों करोड़ों लोग प्रभावित होंगे ऐसी स्थिति में न्यूनतम सीमा तो समझ में आती है परंतु अधिकतम सीमा का क्या औचित्य है और सरकार द्वारा परमाणु दुर्घटना में पीड़ितों के कंपनियों के खिलाफ कोर्ट में जाने से रोक लगाकर सरकार ने देश की जनता के हितों से समझौता क्यों किया है जी, पहले तो मैंने बता दिया ये अधिकतम सीमा नहीं है आपने कहा न्यूनतम सीमा तो उचित है अधिकतम या अधिकतम सीमा नहीं है मैंने अभी आपको प्रावधान भी पढ़ के बताया 1500 करोड़ तो तात्कालिक है जो इंश्योरेंस से आएगा 2600 करोड़ एक्ट में लिखा है 1000 करोड़ के करीब सी का है और जितना चाहें उतना हायर अमाउंट सरकार नोटिफाई कर सकती है तो पहली बात ये कहना कि अधिकतम सीमा ये धारणा ही अपने आप में गलत है जो दूसरा कहा कि हमने कोर्ट में जाने की मनाही कर दी ऐसा नहीं है सबसे पहले क्लेम्स कमिश्नर है जो एडजुडिकेट करेगा इसको और क्लेम्स कमिश्नर से अगर सेटिस्फाइड नहीं है तो हाई कोर्ट और सुप्रीम कोर्ट की अपील का दरवाजा खुला है उस पर कोई प्रतिबंध नहीं है थैंक यू श्री आनंद शर्मा सर सर एट द आउटसेट थ्रू यू आई हैव टू से समथिंग मोस्ट रिस्पेक्टफुली टू सुषमा जी इफ यू सी part 3 of your reply i would request that to the house it should not come that we should be looking at the website for the answers this is not never a part of the reply this is my submission so i'll come to the subjects we are very happy that this government is taking forward indo us civil nuclear agreement which was signed in 2008 in supreme national interest and we are in particularly happy that this is also an acknowledgement by the present ruling gov government and the party that what the upa did was the correct thing for which the government survival was put to risk Now my question is that when the governments have reached an understanding, and correct me, it is understood that it paves the way for the commercial opera operationalization. If it was meant only for the Indian companies, as you have said, then there was no need to reach an understanding. We welcome the understanding reached. Surely there would be. assurances from both the sides if you would shed some light that what were the assurances india sought what assurances you have given we have noted the that the ratification of the convention on supplementary compensation will take place and whether because this agreement paved the way sir of end of india's nuclear apartheid and india being having a special agreement with the international atomic energy agency as well as to get become a member of the nuclear suppliers group there are other countries who supported us who are our strategic partner countries whether the understanding that we reached now during the visit of the us president has also been shared with our strategic partner countries in particular russia and france and what is the response of the commercial nuclear entities to this understanding reached thank you sabapati ji bhai anand sharma ka sawal kai khandon mein hai isliye main alag alag sabka jawab deti hu unhone ek prashn mein lagbhag char ya panch sawal puche sabse pehle unhone kaha ki websites pe kyun dala mujhe lagta hai ki aaj ke sanchar ke samay mein shayad website sabse zyada tez ek madhyam hai cheezon ko pahunchane ka sansad to aaj lagi hai aaj aapko prashn puchne ka mauka mila aur main aapko jawab de rahi hu लेकिन इससे पहले कौन सा दूसरा माध्यम हो सकता था वेबसाइट पर भी फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर्स 
यानी जितनी चीजें आप लोगों के मन में उठ रही थी जितने प्रश्न आपके मन में उठ रहे थे वो शायद एक प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में भी मैं पूरे नहीं कर सकती थी तो फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर अगर वेबसाइट पर डाले तो वो आपकी अच्छाई के लिए ही थे अब आप सिर हिला रहे पर सवाल जरूर पूछते हैं मुझसे and yet there is an etiquette of the house members will of course go to the website nahi to isliye maine ha to isliye maine kaha ki aaj ke sanchar ke samay mein could have been perhaps sanchar ke samay mein website could have been drawn differently ek website ke madhyam se jawab dena acha lagta hai kyunki aapki cheezon ka samadhan pehle ho gaya inka samadhan pehle ho gaya dusri baat jo aapne kahi कि मैंने ये बोला कि ये अपनी कंपनियों के लिए है तो हमें उनसे अंडरस्टैंड नहीं करने की क्या जरूरत थी मैंने कहा अपनी कंपनियों के लिए भी जरूरत थी मैंने ये नहीं कहा कि अपनी कंपनियों के लिए ही किया गया है मैंने कहा कि विदेशी कंपनियों के लिए अकेले नहीं किया गया बल्कि हमने अपनी कंपनियों के लिए भी किया है क्योंकि हमारी कंपनियाँ भी भयभीत थीं उसके बाद जो आपने कहा कि हमने अश्योरेंस क्या दी इसमें अश्योरेंस का सवाल नहीं था स्पष्टता का सवाल था क्लैरिफिकेशन का सवाल था कहीं ना कहीं उनको ये लगता था कि हमारा जो सी एन एल डी एक्ट है वो कंपेटिबल नहीं है सी एस सी से वो उनको समझाने की बात थी तो जब प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाशिंगटन गए सितंबर में तो वहाँ उन्होंने एक कॉन्टेक्ट ग्रुप स्थापित करने की बात की ताकि हम दोनों एक दूसरे के साथ बैठ कर के समझा सकें तो एक कॉन्टेक्ट ग्रुप बना जिस कॉन्टेक्ट ग्रुप में हमारी तरफ से एम के अधिकारी भी रहे डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एटोमिक एनर्जी के भी अधिकारी रहे वित्त विभाग के भी अधिकारी रहे लॉ एंड जस्टिस के अधिकारी भी रहे और एन जो हमारा ऑपरेटर है उसके भी अधिकारी रहे इसी तरह व्हाइट हाउस के अपने अधिकारी रहे उनके डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनर्जी के अधिकारी रहे उनके वेस्टिंग हाउस और जी इलेक्ट्रिकल कंपनियों के अधिकारी रहे जो कमर्शियल डीलिंग जिन्हें करनी थी उनके साथ इस कॉन्टेक्ट ग्रुप के सभापति जी तीन बैठकें हुई नई दिल्ली में वियना में और लंदन में उन तीनों में हम उन्हें ये समझाने में कामयाब हो गए कि हमारा एक्ट कंपेटिबल है सी से इसलिए कोई अश्योरेंस नहीं देनी पड़ी बात केवल यहाँ अटकी हुई थी कि हम उन्हें यह बताने में कामयाब हो जाएं कि हमारा एक्ट कंपेटिबल है इंटरनेशनल लॉ से और स्पेशली सीएससी से वो हम बताने में कामयाब हो गए तो मामला आगे चल पड़ा थैंक यू श्री एच के दुआ सर क्वेश्चन Will the Minister of External Affairs clarify whether the U.S. has agreed to work for India's membership of not only NSG but also Westner Group, Australia, and MTCR, four groups in all? And when do you think? When when does the Minister think India can be a member of these four groups? Thank you. राष्ट्रपति ओबामा के साथ जो बात हुई उसमें चारों की बात हुई है वॉस्ट ग्रुप की भी ऑस्ट्रेलिया ग्रुप की भी एनएसजी की भी और एमटीसीआर की भी और अभी भाई आनंद शर्मा जी ने भी ये जानना चाहा था कि हमने जो बाकी हमारे स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनर है क्या हमने उनसे ये बात की ये संयोग बन गया कि राष्ट्रपति ओबामा की यात्रा यहाँ होने के बाद मेरी अपनी यात्रा चाइना में हुई और वहाँ चाइना में चूँकि रिक की मीटिंग भी थी आर की तो फॉरेन मिनिस्टर लावरोव से भी मेरी बात हुई जो रशिया वाले सबसे मैंने ये बात शेयर की कि उन्होंने एनएसजी के लिए हमारी मेंबरशिप मानी है और मुझे आपको ये भी बताते हुए खुश हुई कि आरआईसी से भी जो जॉइंट कम्युनिके निकला उसमें भी उन दोनों ने हमारी एनएसजी के लिए समर्थन किया जो दुआ साहब ने पूछा कि हम कब ये करेंगे एम और एन के लिए तो अमेरिका ने बिल्कुल साफ कह दिया चारों एक्सपोर्ट रिजीम कंट्रोल्स के लिए कहा है लेकिन अभी ग्राउंड वर्क तैयार हो रहा है हम लोग ये सोचते हैं कि हमारे बाकी स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनर्स भी इस चीज के लिए तैयार हो जाएं। जैसे ही ग्राउंड वर्क तैयार होगा हम लोग इसके लिए अप्लाई करेंगे श्री अनिल देसाई थैंक यू चैनल सर विद योर परमिशन आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क द एक्सटर्नल मिनिस्टर टू शेड सम लाइट ऑन एज द पावर जनरेशन ऑन ऑफ आउट ऑफ न्यूक्लियर प्लांट Uh, the treatment of nuclear waste could she explain on that because uh, nuclear waste is a real problem faced by even the countries which are uh, having nuclear plants in the western countries and uh, the my question is uh, because the radiation which is coming out of it i mean may have serious consequences on the population of india considering the density of population particularly of our country thank you sabhapati ji 
ये सबसे बड़ी बात थी कि स्पेंट फ्यूल का क्या करें और स्पेंट फ्यूल को रीप्रोसेसिंग के राइट्स हम लोगों ने इस समझौते में ले लिए हैं और स्पेंट फ्यूल को रीप्रोसेस करके हम प्लूटोनियम तक पहुंच रहे हैं थैंक यू क्वेश्चन थर्टी थ्री थर्टी थ्री सर यस सर आई हैव टू चूज फ्रॉम टेन और ट्वेल्व नोटिस थ्री ओनली I I appreciate your sentiment, but please understand my position. <laughs> question number thirty-three, sir. Thank you. Very good question. Uh, Chairman, sir, your answer is laid on the table of the house. Supplementary, please, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, our country is welfare state, extending benefits to poor. This is our main concern. But Rajiv Awas Yojana was launched in 2011 with motive of making a slum-free India. Then this scheme converted in 2013 as fully centrally sponsored scheme for a period of nine years. That is 2013 to 2022. During this short span of time specific, as per 21 cities from seven states had been submitted 55 pilot projects. For construction of forty-two thousand four hundred eighty-eight dwelling units, my first supplementary question is whether the government will carry on the already approved projects for the con for the construction of forty-two thousand four hundred eighty-eight dwelling units, or you are cancelled everything. Thank you, <coughs> sir. After the advent of this new government taking over, the government have reviewed the. housing program across the country and came to the conclusion we must go in a big way to provide housing for all by 2022 which is the 75th year of our independence keeping that in mind a new housing program is is unveil is in an unveil and we are working out the details we have also talked to the states also taken the inputs from the states but the question the honorable member has asked is about uh, those pilot projects which were sanctioned and uh, which are uh, in progress uh, that matter also i am examining it there is no intention to cancel any program as such but uh, if suppose if some of these projects are not even taken off naturally we have to have a relook at them and decide how to go about it but one thing and I, i can assure the honorable members wherever the enough ground work has been done spade work has been done wherever the proposals are ready those proposals will be considered on priority in the new housing mission thank you second question thank you sir sir after the assurance given by the minister i too believe this present government is really concerned about providing housing facility if so whether government will come forward to bring a legislation to prevent the printing of photos of the living political leaders in the identity cards provided to beneficiaries selected under welfare schemes some state have already still continue the nickname and photos of ex chief ministers also so can you give, give, come for a new legislation for that to stop all those things <laughs> so the this is not by the done by the central government this is done by the state government at the end of the day the implementation has to be done by the state government but, but please 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 the funding please let the honorable minister complete no no there is a sir there is a merit in the suggestion or observation made by the honorable member because the political regimes also change sometimes in some states frequently also that being the case this session has to be kept in mind i will convey this session to the state government at the end of the day they have to take a final view shri sanjay singh aapke madhyam se pichle upa sarkar ki bahut sari yojnaon ka naam badal karke dusre namon se yojnaye chalu ki gayi hai aisa sunne mein aaya hai ki pichle congress ke pradhan mantriyon aur us samay ke rajnetaon ke naam bhi badal karke दूसरे नामों के द्वारा योजनाएं चलाने का विचाराधीन है सर जब स्कीम का फाइनल रूपरेखा तय होगा 
तब तय करेंगे स्कीम का नाम किसी नेता के नाम पे रखना नहीं तो सरकार का नाम पे रखना नहीं तो 75 इयर्स ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस क्या रखना उस समय तय करते सर ये होता रहता है पहले हाउसिंग स्कीम वाल्मीकि अम्बेडकर योजना था श्रीमान अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी के जमाने में बाद में नया सरकार आया परिवर्तित किया ये सरकार का अधिकार है मगर अभी कोई निर्णय नहीं लिया है श्री मोतीलाल बोरा माननीय सभापति जी मैं माननीय मंत्री जी से जानना चाहता हूँ कि राजीव गांधी आवास योजना यूपीए के सरकार ने सन 2011 में इसको शुरू आज की थी और 2013 में इसके व्यापक विस्तार के लिए बहुत से प्रोजेक्ट तैयार किए थे माननीय मंत्री जी ने इस बात को स्वीकार किया है कि जो प्रोजेक्ट राजीव गांधी आवास योजना के अंतर्गत प्रारंभ किए गए थे उन्हें बंद नहीं किया जाएगा और उनके लोगों को भुगतान किया जाएगा मैं माननीय सभापति महोदय माननीय मंत्री जी से जानना चाहता हूँ कि राजीव गांधी आवास योजना का नाम पूरे देश में हर व्यक्ति के हर व्यक्ति के जवान पर है जो प्रश्न पूछा गया है उसमें इस बात को कहा गया है कि क्या राजीव गांधी योजना के स्थान पर सरदार पटेल राष्ट्रीय शहरी आवास मिशन नाम की एक नई योजना शुरू कर देने वाली है माननीय मंत्री जी ने स्वीकार किया है कि वे एक को मिशन को बनाने जा रहे हैं मैं माननीय मंत्री से जानना चाहता हूं कि आपकी अपनी कोई योजना नहीं राजीव गांधी विद्युत करण योजना का नाम आप बदल रहे हैं यूपीए सरकार की सारी योजनाओं के नाम को बदलकर आप अपनी सरकार के नाम पर चलाना चाहते हैं तो मैं माननीय मंत्री जी से जानना चाहता हूँ कि राजीव गांधी आवास योजना के अंतर्गत जो लोगों को प्रोजेक्ट शुरू किए गए क्या वे कायम रहेंगे और इस योजना का आप इसका नाम मिशन कर सकते हैं राजीव गांधी आवास मिशन कर सकते हैं लेकिन जो प्रश्न पूछा गया है उस बात को आपने उसका कहीं जवाब नहीं दिया सरदार वल्लभ भाई पटेल कांग्रेस के नेता थे देश के गृह मंत्री थे को इतराज नहीं होता लेकिन आप छिपाते क्यों हैं साफ क्यों नहीं कहते इस योजना का नाम बदल नहीं जा रहा है तो माननीय मंत्री इस बात का जवाब दे श्री मोतीलाल बोरा जी बहुत वरिष्ठ है बहुत अनुभवी है उनको मालूम है सरकार अपना समय में कोई स्कीम लाए तो उसका नाम क्या रखना वो सरकार सोच के तय करते हैं और जो आपने कहा छिपाने का जरूरत क्या है सवाल ही नहीं सर कोई छिपाने का जरूरत नहीं है और संकोच करने का जरूरत नहीं मगर अभी तक कोई ऐसा निर्णय हुआ नहीं सुझाव आया बीच में सुझाव आया सरदार पटेल जी के नाम के ऊपर राम ये मिशन कैरियर रखे तो कैसा रहेगा ऐसा सुझाव आया उस सुझाव के ऊपर अभी तक कोई निर्णय नहीं किया इस बीच में प्रधानमंत्री जी ने भी हमको मार्गदर्शन किया और कहा ये शहरी आवास योजना और ग्रामीण आवास योजना दोनों अलग अलग स्कीम्स है अगर पूरा देश में हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल उसके संदर्भ में दोनों विभाग बैठ के आपस में चर्चा करके संबंधित और विभिन्न विभागों से बात करके कॉम्प्रहेंसिव हाउसिंग स्कीम बिका 2022 तक सबके लिए मकान निर्माण करना आसान नहीं है हमको मालूम है और राजीव गांधी आवास योजना का भी अभी तक इम्प्लीमेंटेशन कहाँ तक आया हम लोग खुद अनुभव कर रहे हैं वो अनुभव को ध्यान में रखेंगे और हमारा लक्ष्य को भी ध्यान में रखेंगे जब मिशन स्कीम फाइनल होगा तब तय करेंगे नाम किसका नाम रखना भाई आपने कहा वो यूपीए का जमा वो यूपीए है ये एन है ये आपको भी मालूम है इसलिए सरकार अपना कार्यकाल में जो स्कीम लाएगा उसका क्या करना दूसरा पॉइंट आपने जो बोला जो लोगों को मंजूरी दिया राजू जी जी आवास योजना का नाम पे वो स्कीम में जो लोग रफ्तीदार है जिसको कहते हैं बेनिफिशरी है उनका मकान का निर्माण कुछ हद तक आया रुक गए तो उसको क्या करने वाले हैं आप छोड़ने वाले ऐसे भी पूछा मेरे ख्याल से आप जी जी नाम से ज्यादा काम महत्वपूर्ण है नाम आपको मालूम है काम माँ नहीं नाम क्यों नहीं दिया आप देखिए ना सर सर चेयरमैन सर प्लीज कंटिन्यू द गवर्नमेंट डू नॉट हेजिटेट टू शेयर द नेम इफ एट ऑल वी नेम इट 
we have not yet named the scheme. The scheme is under at the final stage of discussion. We have held a discussion with the Rural Development Ministry also recently and the advice of the Prime Minister how to reach this gap. How to reach this gap because gap is very huge, both urban and rural. Combined together, there is a huge gap of housing shortage. How do you meet it? What are the budgetary scope and then what are the other ways and means to re mobilize resources to what extent we can involve the other sectors also. These things are at advanced stage of final consultation. That's what I have submitted. With regard to the houses which are in progress, what will happen to those liability? That is also part two question. That liability issue is being considered, but with regard to beneficiaries, they will be given priority when the new scheme comes into operation because they have been already verified, found suitable and the state governments have recommended those schemes and those places. So that's why I told Honorable Ramanangamuji also, they will be given priority. That's my submission. Sri Meghraj Jain. Question number 34. Sir, the answer is laid on the table of the house. Supplementary, please. My first supplementary is that the, the answer given goes against the decision of the Senate of the Academic, Academy for Scientific and Innovative Research on 8th August 2014 as item number 24. They have decided. I will just read one sentence of that. The Senate determined that the basic, uh, basis of the decision to close the PhD program probed also appeals, applies to the other PhD program in database systems and climate change informatics and should be discontinued. My question was regarding this program. The answer is that it is only exploring the possibility of the placement of students, but already the students have been shifted and the, 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 they are, they, from January onwards their fellowship has been uh, forfeited and in that case the minister, I, I don't know why he is saying this. So I want some clarification. Whether Thank you. So first of all, for uh, the purpose of record, these students are have not been shifted as on date, number one. But there is definitely a, uh, an inquiry committee which was uh, set up and the inquiry committee reported back to the Senate and the Senate decided that basically the basic complaint was received for the computational biology and bioinformatics course. But when the inquiry committee assessed the overall situation in that particular lab, what they actually came to the conclusion was that there was a detailed report that they gave. While conducting the inquiry, the committee found that the overall running of the PhD program in the CSIR NISCAR was in a very poor state. The factors involved were availability of infrastructure, expertise of the faculty, and the mandate of the laboratory. It was found that the programs were not run as per the desirable standards of ACSIR. Further, out of about 60 scientists at CSIR NISCAR, four are faculty of ACSIR, that is about 6.6% compared to the average across the CSIR laboratory, which is something like 62%. The chairman of the committee in its deliberation to the Senate mentioned about this matter and expressed the committee's concern, particularly regarding conducting the coursework based on which the student's registration to the PhD programs was supposed to be given. The Senate deliberated in great detail on this particular issue and finally decided that CSIR, NISCARE, to be unfit for running the PhD program under its banner. Moreover, I have to state that you see in CSIR labs we have never compromised on quality and in this particular case the two labs the, these the, the, there are only the, this is a case of four plus two six students out of something like 2900 students which are under the CSIR labs uh, uh, taking up the PhD course here also these students are proposed to be shifted to another lab of NISTED which is also located in the same campus 
just there uh, uh, on various floors. So we are neither compromising with the interest of the students, neither we are compromising with the quality. And everything has been done as per following the highest academic standards for which the CSIR labs are known. Thank you. Second question. My, <coughs> my doubt is, uh, I, th I think, <coughs> confirmed by the minister's answer. See, if the CSIR labs and the academy has got so high standards, why did, in the first place, they sanction the course for this? If that Mr. C was not really there, they, they, don't, they did not have the physical and the academic facilities to do this program. Why did they give? This is the first batch. The, the first batch has not come out. It is only after, they have been there only for six months. So how the Senate, and, and, and uh, as far as I understand, the probe was only regarding the computational bioinformatics. Even the records show that it, the probe was only about that. Because even the, here it said, the probed program that is regarding the computational bioinformatics. They are about the other thing, that is the da database system. There is no probe. It was a decision off and at the when the item number 24 was considered. All right. my, so my, my, my question is this. See, there are 40 CSIR institutions which are affiliated to this academy. At present, there are 630 students. Now, according to the deemed university act passed by the parliament and acted, uh, the statutes, if a course is to be shifted from one institution to another, the consent of the, the, the guides in the existing institution, the consent of the students, and the consent of the institution to which it is to be transferred. This has to be obtained. And here what is said is that may be transferred to other relevant laboratories. They have not thought of, when the, the program was on, when they, they have decided to discontinue it in one institution, they have not thought of to which institution it has to be shifted. To, they said it has to be to other relevant laboratories. I think this is a cavalier way in which the, 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 this can be handled. Uh, even at the cost of repetition, I want to say it has all been done to maintain the highest standards. That's number one. There is no prejudice or bias against anybody in this particular case. You see, when the course was proposed to be, because this institution was created by an act of parliament to basically start the research process in the various CSIR labs and to strengthen research as well as the translational research, innovation as well as the translational research. And when this was proposed, that this course must be started, these two courses must be started about which I mentioned earlier, in this particular lab of NISCARE, it was basically uh, uh, the, the details, details of the uh, uh, faculty members available there was taken. It initially it was proposed that 15 people could qualify. The course was started but later on it was found when, the, when there was a particular complaint, we went into a detailed process of inquiry by uh, uh, senior people. There is a detailed report. The member, I can uh, give the detailed report also to the member. And on the basis of that it was found that these, there were only four faculty members which were actually qualified to be able to handle these PhD students, which is almost 6% of the total. Uh, otherwise, in all the CSIR labs, the average is 62% of the scientists. They are actually eligible to be uh, having that uh, acumen to be able to have PhD students. So it was in the larger interest of students as well as to maintain the high standards of uh, 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 quality in the CSIR labs that this decision, the Senate had nothing to do against any particular lab. And moreover, it, has, it, has, it, it is the mandate of the labs to maintain that highest standard basically and this institution has been created by parliament only to maintain the highest standards. Thank you. Uh, Shri Ashok Ganguly. In a related but slightly broad, uh, broader it, there is a deep concern in the continuous, is this one of the examples of a deep concern of continuous erosion of the quality of research from an institution with which I have been associated for, I was associated for many years. And given the fact that 
climate research and analytics is such a critical issue given the recent upheaval on a premier institute in the capital of this country will the honorable minister take preemptive steps so that climate research does not fall between the cracks and some special dispensation is allowed to take over the overall climate research and analytics in india thank you as used terms like upheaval there is nothing like an upheaval in this i i have said earlier also that you see there was there were these two two types of researches which were happening one was on the database systems and the climate change information another was on the computational biology and bioinformatics or the it is not that we have st stopped doing the research and this is one of the uh, 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 38 labs otherwise if you look at the status of the overall students currently a acsir has 2827 students registered for phd and as 142 mtech students it has conducted four convocations and already awarded 312 mtech and 100 phd degrees acsir has already obtained membership from association of indian universities and also from association of commonwealth universities the A acsir has also had collaboration with national and international organizations such as the public health foundation of india hyderabad i research foundation at lv prasad i institute royal melbourne institute of technology australia and the university of california advanced solar technologies institute and moreover moreover ियर a csr like institution has taken a decision after proper study and consultation within 6 months how an institution like csir and these other institution has taken a decision to stop a phd course within 6 months only experience so very serious issues are something fishy is here then my specific question whether any institution has conducted any specific enquiry on this database management and climate change course phd course the senate has taken any specific decision to enquire the quality of this course then what are the reason for if so what are the reasons to conduct this enquiry within this 6 months sir i think the sir as i said earlier i i would repeat that there was a specific complaint sent by somebody on an email if you want i can read the details of the complaint also okay, then there then, then there was one, a, one, one, one minute then, one minute then, then there was a very high powered com uh, enquiry committee uh, which was constituted uh, yes, sent by somebody yes. sir has taken a decision within 6 months and a complaint sent by somebody who is sir, that somebody sir, any me, noble laureate any noble laureate any well known can be well known scientist then it is okay please, okay the name of the no, no, just a minute just a minute please please Sir, on the basis of that complaint, a, a an enquiry committee has been. Uh, you you want to know the details? I can give you the details of the person. Please, it's not your turn. Is he out of turn? What now? My, please, this is not your turn. Please. sir basically i i i i'll give you i i can give him the all the details of the complaint on the basis of that complaint a very high powered enquiry committee which is very distinguished no no members, please sir. mr Rai, no, you must what listen to the answer please he is giving an answer please i want to know the name of the just one minute please he sir he is giving an answer please listen to him sir the the complaint was made from a single source through email manohar.parik@gmail.com the individual never appeared on calling during investigation made at csir is clear on the basis of his complaint initially the complaint was received on november 1 2013 further again the complaint was received on may 20 2014 
the initial complaint received on november 1 2013 asking for justification of starting a doctoral program at csir nisker in the area of computational biology and unavailability of approvals from competent authorities for starting the program then further a complete complaint was received on may 20 2014 on additional issues including conduct of phd program at nisker in the area of computational biology and non compliance to a c s i r rules and regulations sir this is about the complaint he further if he wants the further Please, details one minute and then then let, then let sir, him on the basis of this let the on, you have finished please the, just let the minister complete the answer you can't keep interrupting sir let him complete the answer please another issue also then sir then sir the the uh, i would like to mention the name of the, uh, the members who uh, who were part of the inquiry committee then there was a inquiry committee which was constituted constituted which had shri raj singh the chief scientist and ac sir coordinator at csir siri pilani as the chairman there was dr lakshmi parmeshwaran chief scientist and head bridges and structures and ac sir coordinator at csir crri new delhi who was one of the members another member was dr vidya gupta chief scientist and head biochemical and sciences division csir ncl pune another member was dr kunal ray associate director administration and finance no. and then there was a member convener shri pl dahara executive consultant ac sir coordination office and then sir after detailed deliberation and going into all the pros and cons the technicalities the standards and everything they have given a very, very detailed report they have they have elaborated each and every point they have gone into the status what is happening there what is the level of the uh, faculty what is the uh, infrastructure and everything and if, if you want i can read this whole inquiry no, report no, no, also not. or if you want i can place it you can and, uh, you can make the information available to the honorable thank you sir no 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 i am not allowed you to interview just one minute please thank you dr sir take an inquiry before on the reading this this is the complaint on another issue one, just one minute listen to me just one minute listen to me just one minute listen to me please the honorable minister has cited that an inquiry was conducted If, please one minute one minute on the basis of a complaint an inquiry was conducted now if there are questions about that inquiry please raise that matter separately this is not part of this question out on this issues are this course ask the minister minister said the complaint on okay. another course this course on data based management and climate change informatics sir sir no no i think there is sir i i i i i agree with him what he is saying you see there was a there, there was a complaint about a particular thing the enquiry committee went to the lab they 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 found that the overall atmosphere and overall standards were actually not proper to be able to conduct that course and they they they, they have given no, no, please they please, have given everything in detail no. they, whatever whatever the report says they have given everything you they have elaborated any in dissatisfaction with the answer please raise it separately sir is a question no no please this is not a discussion mislead, this is not a discussion sir if sir, you are not satisfied with the answer sir, nobody has raised it separately i, I will placed, go to the next sir, question sir i have placed all the records and no, all sorry, the facts on the record question there is no question of even remotely misleading the house so i i would request that the member should take back his words there, there is no question of misleading thank you question 35 please sit down mr balakopal please sit down sir, question 35 sir question 35 yes thank you honorable thank chairman you. sir the answer to question number 35 is uh, right on the table of the house sabhapati mahode प्रश्न के जवाब में सात देशों के द्वारा स्मार्ट सिटी बनाने में रुचि जाहिर करी है मैं आपके माध्यम से माननीय मंत्री महोदय से पूछना चाहता हूं क्या इसमें कोई विशेष रूप से शहर चिन्हित किए गए हैं और सरकार ने उसके संबंध में कोई करार किए गए हैं और क्या अजमेर के संबंध में भी कोई करार सरकार ने किया है सर दिस इज ए न्यू कॉन्सेप्ट it was uh, 
mentioned by the prime minister and subsequently in principle the government have agreed with this uh, smart city concept and a concept note was initially prepared and it was also put on website also for the convenience of the people in 2014 itself and now the first consultation was held with the ministry with the government organizations with various institutions thereafter a national conclave was called of all the states and union territories to take their views and also their inputs also so then also the different commercial business organizations who have got who have shown some interest in this new concept they have also were given an opportunity as i told you sir number of countries are also showing to participate in this smart city concept so that being the case we are examining what are the proposals and we are also learning from the experience of earlier mission and then how to improve it further and then make it a smart city smart cities cannot be built overnight it will take years rome is not built in one day or one year we are all aware of it my side about uh, ajmer sir ajmer also is identified for development of a smart city but once the concept is totally agreed and approved by the cabinet then the remaining work takes place meanwhile certain organizations for example united states business uh, uh, development authority the uh, organization they have come forward so we have asked them you make a preliminary study in those cities and then come out with some plan in what way you want to participate and then what sort of technical support you want to give you give a presentation before us and then we will take a final call in that ajmer also is one of the cities thank you dusra prashn sir ye jo uh, smart city ke concept mein sarkar ne jo sujhav amantrit kiye hain uh, jan bhagidari ke liye bhi kya sarkar ke dwara smart city ke vikas yojnaon mein koi concept paper mein ya yojnaon mein kuch shamil kiya gaya sir uh, i stand it is corrected sir this ajmer is selected under ruday program that is heritage uh, augmentation development program that's ajmer is Aj ajmer is uh, selected under that and then we have also already sanctioned some money i had consultation with ajmer but with regard to other cities which were identified by certain other international uh, agencies and countries they are uh, in the preliminary stage of identifying the technical requirements that are required for those cities secondly with regard to people's participation sir once this plan technical plan our preliminary detailed project report is prepared that will be put for consultation without the people's participation this program will not succeed so sir there are different stakeholders central government state government and the urban local body of that particular city which need to be developed and then we are also thinking of a city challenge system wherein they will be made eligible to participate in that depending on their ability depending on their past performance depending on their resources depending on the preparedness of the urban local body itself to accept the reforms etc so people's participation is vital to this and we are insisting on that and we go at the final stage the approval of the urban local body through its representatives will be taken then only we will move forward shri jairam ramesh like to ask the honorable minister whether there is a set of core quantitative indicators to define what a smart city is we all know we all want cities to be smart but is there a set of quantitative indicators if they fulfill those indicators a city would be considered smart sir finally it's a popular concept and which is being talked around across the globe and also in india i am i am i am frank to say that this smart city is a new concept what is smart for a smart city you need a smart leader smart not in terms of height weight coat and suit and boot i am i am not talking of the height weight suit coat and boot i am talking of smart decisions and a smart vision secondly you need smart people who are willing to be reformed thirdly sir this the basic requirements basic requirement because sir jairam ji has asked the basic requirements basic requirements are assured water supply assured power supply sanitation in that particular city and then affordable transport facilities then the local uh, sanitation along with sanitation solid waste management and also the physical infrastructure institutional infrastructure 
and then social infrastructure, economic infrastructure, they will be taken into consideration. If all these things are worked out, and if you are able to fulfill them, then you will be called as a small city, smart city. But a beginning has to be made. Now we are in the, in the process of finally quantifying, qualifying, what are the requirements for a smart city, then how do you go about it? We are learning from others' experience also, different countries across the globe. They have their own standards, but I can't compare my cities with the international cities, knowing the... But at the same time, we want to have the architecture, we want to have the local culture, and we, are, we also want to have local people participation in this. This is, a, this, this is learning by experience. Shri Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. Will the Honorable Minister clarify if the smart city program will apply to existing cities like my city, Bangalore, sir, as a more effective successor to JNURM? Uh, when will the smart city definition be complete? And is there any implication of the 14th Finance Commission on uh, the smart city's uh, definition, sir? Sir, uh, the, we have a retrofitting, then we have a redevelopment. And then we also have a plan of having a satellite city near the existing city because uh, changing the present city into a smart city is not an easy task. But recently when I've been to Bangalore, Bangalore public representatives along with the ministers there, they told me they are willing. So we have to take up that exercise and then study about Bangalore. And I was there in Hyderabad, Chief Minister of Telangana, Chandrasekhar also made a presentation before me saying that they want to convert. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, sir, the parameters will be fixed by center and the ch city challenge system will be there. Bloomberg, uh, America, the mayor came and he said he is willing to provide uh, the needed technical support initially through his uh, Bloomberg uh, Philanthropies organization. And uh, the local body state, if they both come forward, those cities will be definitely considered. But at the same time, how much resources are available to us because it's a huge expenditure involved in this. You need lakhs of crores and we know the situation of our cities. And uh, the second supplementary, second point which I has asked about uh, the 14th Finance Commission. Sir, the 14th Finance Commission recommendation is a good news for the states and for the urban local bodies. It will be little uh, this thing to central government to uh, the national level. Uh, Manmohanji is here. but. Uh, the local bodies 73rd and 74th amendment which was initiated by C. Rajivji earlier that envisages devaluation of funds, functions and functionaries. It has not taken place fully in different states. I am not holding anybody responsible for that. I am happy now the finance commission is straight away giving certain amount, good amount of money to the urban local bodies which will make them to improve their revenues and also function in a better manner. This is my feeling about the 14th Finance Commission. That also will be taken into consideration. How much that particular city is getting? What is the capacity as of now? How much is being added? That will also be taken into consideration. Thank you. Shri Shantaram Naik. The concept of expression of interest comes very late. When this tender process is conceived, a project is conceived, and before tender, expression of interest is called for. There are documents in writing just some countries saying we are interested, it doesn't mean expression of interest. So I would like to know any concrete projects have been prepared and concrete expression of interest has been conveyed by any country or you are just saying it expression of interest. Very good. Certain countries have come forward. They had a preliminary discussions with the national government. Some countries had a preliminary discussion and also full discussion with the state government also. For example, Singapore is holding discussions with Andhra Pradesh government. America has shown interest with regard to Visakhapatnam, Allahabad. I agree, I agree the distinction the honorable member has made. Expression of interest is different from after the finalization of the plan and then coming forward with a proposal and then ready to take part in that. Both are different, I do agree. But we are at the base, at the beginning, I, these countries have shown interest. I asked them, you come clear. What is it you want to do? In what way you want to participate in the cities? What is your proposal? Come forward. I, that's the suggestion I have made. If, if, sir, I can assure the house that everything will be done transparently. It will be done through public tender system. Only nobody will be given a city just like that. You develop this. We can't do it like that. 
But if some country has come forward to provide us technical support, we must be happy to receive it. Uh, question 36. Yes, sir. Let the uh, answer. Statement is laid on the table of the house. <coughs> sir, the Raghuram Rajan Committee has recommended a fresh approach that gets rid of the special category state class classification for states with high funding needs. Funding from the center to the states will be based on states' development needs as well as its development. I am afraid question hour is over. House is adjourned till 2 p.m.